Okay, so this is Nutrition in Sport by Raj and Waterman. Firstly, we're looking at macronutrients. Uh, firstly, we should look at the definition of macronutrients found in Matthew Kent's book. So macronutrients, according to Kent, are a fundamentally essential type of nutrient which are needed to be consumed in large amounts for the body to function normally. This includes development of growth and general development of the organism. Types of macronutrients include carbohydrates, fats and proteins. So on to carbohydrates. Carbs, as they are commonly known, are made up of three basic elements. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. In short form, CHO. Carbohydrates always have twice the amount of hydrogen as they do have of oxygen or carbon. There are three subcategories of carbohydrates called monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides. The main sources of carbohydrates from food include starchy foods such as pasta and rice, sugars and fibre. The structure of carbohydrates, as we can see, is quite complex, including obviously our three elements, hydrogen, carbogen, uh, carbon and oxygen. Um, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen all bind together in a chemical process to form a carbohydrate molecule, molecule in this case, a glucose molecule. It's important to notice that is, there is twice the amount of single elements of hydrogen as there is oxygen or carbon. So on to the first subcategory, which is monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the simplest sugar, the simplest form of carbohydrate. They cannot be broken down any further. They have between three to nine carbon atoms. The amount of carbon atoms determines which subcategory of monosaccharides they are put into. The various subcategories of monosaccharides include trioses, tetroses, pentoses and hexoses. There are essentially, monosaccharides are a simple sugar unit, also known as simple sugars. Monosaccharides are quite simply the building block of all more complex forms of carbohydrates. Two important monosaccharides are glucose and fructose. Glucose is an immediate source of energy for the body, so it's highly important for athletes to intake the correct amount of this type of carbohydrate at the correct times before performing exercise. So on to the second subcategory of carbohydrates, which is disaccharides. Disaccharides are structured as such that they are a union of two monosaccharides bound together. Once again, they're classed as a simple carbohydrate. Most, the most well-known disaccharides are sucrose, maltose and lactose. Their structure adjusts slightly when two monosaccharides bond to create a disaccharide, whereby a hydrogen atom is lost in one monosaccharide and a hydroxyl group is lost from the other monosaccharide, thus allowing the bond to take place and therefore become a disaccharide molecule. As we can see from the picture above, the transformation of glucose and fructose molecules into sucrose. Essentially, this shows a monosaccharide losing two elements so that the bond can be made between the monosaccharides to form a sucrose, which is part of the disaccharide group. So finally, the last carbohydrate subcategory is polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are the most complex carbohydrate, known as complex carbs. They are multiple monosaccharides bound together by gly glycosidic bonds. Common forms are starch and cellulose. These structures can be linear, as in 